Hi, Egg again here. Recently in TalkGraphics.com, Tom asked how we would reproduce a mailing label he'd seen in Zara Extreme. The mailing label is the red shape that uh, is in the background here. So, like all things um, Zara, there's many ways to do it. But this is how I'd go about it. So it might be of interest to people. Right, I'll bring up the layers gallery. All right, we've got a target shape here, but it's just to, to remind us what we want, um, which is the finished shape. So just let's have a look at the finished shape to start off with. Um, if you look at it, I consider that it's um, basically two shapes. I've selected the blue inner shape here. I'm gonna give that a yellow fill. So all right, what's that shape? It's just a rectangle with a square taken out the bottom left-hand corner. And there's a second shape here, which I'll give a green fill, which is um, another rectangle with an arrow taken out the bottom left-hand corner. Just click undo until we get back to the original. The thing that makes this uh, look good, though, is that the border uh, basically is the same amount all the way around, and it's a matter of reproducing that that's the difficult part about doing this. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the layers gallery again, close down the target shapes. I'm in the drawing layer now. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to make a square. Uh, and make a square in Zara you, with the rectangle tool. You hold down the control key as you drag out, and that restrains it to a square. Right, I'll just fill that with green. Um, you're going to have to bear with me here because I'm going to have to do a lot of scrolling left and right to get in the window on this uh, tutorial. Um, I'm in the selector tool. I'm going to move that along a bit now. And Zara reports that this square here is 175 pixels by 175 pixels. Um, the lock aspect ratio is on. I want to work with a square of 160, so I'm going to type 160 in the width box there. Hit enter, and automatically, because the lock aspect's on, it reduces the height as well to 160 by 160. So that's the beginning square. What I want to do now is make a copy of that, clone it, and the clone is just a, a duplicate on in exactly the same position as the original. So I hold down the control key, hit K to clone it. I want to fill that with blue so you can see it. Um, just to make sure, you know there's two there, there's two squares, so I'll just move that aside for a second. Hit the undo button, move it back. Okay. I'm going to use the contour tool now, which is my favourite tool in Extreme. Hit the contour tool. Again, you're going to have to scroll right along over here. So, single, you lose the actual drawing area altogether. And here are the controls for the contour tool. Um, I want to use a mic to join, so I'll click on the mic to join, and I'll set a four pixel border is what I want to be using. So I've typed in there four pixels. By default, uh, Zara Extreme always goes to an outer contour, which I would go to an inner contour, or you can change it around by default. But anyway, hit the inner contour tool, and then it creates. I'll just slide that back so you can see. It's now select, uh, created about five squares on top of each other. I only want the, the innermost square and I do this by hitting that inset path button. Problem is if I hit the inset path button you won't be able to see what actually happens. So I'm hitting it, you'll have to trust me on this, I'm hitting the inset path button now. Okay, again there you can see now you've got two different squares. I'll hit the undo buttons again to go back to what we were. Right, this time Select the outer green square and hold down Control K to duplicate that square, and I'll give that a pale blue colour. So we now we've got one, two, three rectangles. Right, with that pale blue square selected, I'm going to go along to the set origin point, which is this three by three matrix thing up here, and I'm going to click the bottom left hand corner. Clicking there, bottom left hand corner. I now want to reduce that square down to 50 by 50. And because we set the origin down to the bottom left hand corner, it automatically drops down to that size. I'm going to control K again 
hit the contour tool, drift all the way out here again, set that to four pixels, inner, hitting the insect pass button now, change the color so you can see it. So you've now got one, two, three, four squares. Okay, I'm going to select the light blue and the darker blue squares. Slide along, arrange, combine shapes, subtract shapes. Let's move that aside there. And now you see you've got a square with a square taken out the bottom left-hand corner. Right, this is the beginning of our arrow. Um, it doesn't look much like an arrow at the moment, but if I hit the shape editor tool and drag select over that bottom left hand node, that node gets selected, I'll hit that, that will delete it. Now you can see that that's an arrow here, you can quite clearly see that's the start of the arrow. Now we need to make the 45 degree stem on it, and how do we do that? The best way to do that is to create, um, I'll set the line width to 2 by default. Um, and it's pro probably best if I zoom in on this. I'm going to set the view quality down to wireframe. And I'm going to zoom in to that. And what I've got to do here is make it a bit awkward. Is to make sure you can see what we're working on. Alright, we're in wireframe. I've got the shape of it at all. I'm going to bring the crossers until they cross between over those two lines there. Click and hold down control. Sorry. Click and hold down control. That constrains that angle of that line to 45 degrees. I don't want that that long, so I can again select that node. Holding down the control key, I'll bring it down to here. Right. We'll now go back up to full view. And that's fine, but we want a, a lot thicker line than that. So I'm going to set this line width to, say, 24 points. That's quite good. Um, now what I need to do is go arrange, and I'm going to convert that line to a shape. Just now, um, you now see it's, it's, it's more like a, a rectangle than it is a line. OK, I'm going to select that and select the arrowhead and go arrange, combine shapes, add shapes. And I'll go to a previous zoom so we know where we were. Make sure you can see where we are. Yeah, you can see where we are. Um, there, you've got that arrow shape there. Knock it down. You can see it's a, just an arrow shape. Undo that to put it back where it was. And, and holding down the shift key, I'll also select the green square in the background. Go arrange, combine shapes, subtract shapes. And there we have a square with an arrow taken out the bottom left hand corner. Put that back in position. Just drag that down and I'll move those along here. And I'm going to give them a red line colour. And I'll reduce it to one. And no fill colour. Okay, so that's really nearly enough the mailing label done, apart from the fact that it's probably you need it wider than you need to do higher. Um, the way to do that is to drag select so both of them are selected. Hit the shape at the tool, drag select over those right hand side nodes, then holding down the control key, you can drag that side out to whatever width you want. And there you have the mailing label complete. That's the way I would do it in Zara Extreme. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Cheerio!